In this problem, we're being asked to find the forces acting at the five points A through E on this frame. And there's a uniform distributed load acting downward on member CDE. And that load has a, a value of two kilonewtons per meter of length. There's a, a load acting horizontally at member A, B, and C. And that varies from zero at point A. And it increases vertically with a linear increase up to a maximum value of two kilonewtons per meter at the top. To solve this problem, let's begin by drawing a free body diagram. And we'll have to do three free body diagrams. But let's start with this two force member, BD. So here I've drawn it. Point B is in the lower left. Point D is in the upper right. And let's make the assumption that this two force member is under tension and that a force D acts to the upper right and a force B acts to the lower left. And these forces, because it's a two-force member, the forces have to be equal and opposite. If they weren't equal and opposite, it would suggest that the member was either rotating or accelerating. So I've drawn the two arrows pointing opposite of each other, and I know that D has to equal B. Already we started out, we've got two unknowns, but we have one equation already, D equals B. And as we work our way through our this problem, I'll identify unknowns and I'll identify all of the equations that we can write. And you'll see at the end, we'll end up with seven unknowns, but seven equations, and we'll be able to solve all the values that we need. So start out two unknowns already and only one equation. So I got that out of the way, and let's continue by drawing a free body diagram of this member at the top, member CDE. And here's that free body diagram. We've got C, D, and E. And what we've got is a pin connection at point C, a pin connection at D, and this roller at point E. So with a pin connection at point C, there's some vertical component of force, and we'll call that CY, and some horizontal component of force, and let's call that CX. And at location D, there's a member BD is pulling to the lower left at point D. And we can show that this is a 45 degree angle. This angle in here has to be 45 degrees. The reason it's 45 degrees is because point D is one meter away from point C. And point B is one meter below point C. So this angle in here is 45 degrees. So we'll call this force D. And at point E, this roller, because a roller can only exert a normal force at point E, that force acts only to the left or in the negative x direction. There's one other force, a downward force, resulting from this distributed load of two kilonewtons per meter. And that force, because this is a uniform force, that resultant force will act right in the middle of member CDE. And that value, let's call it R1, it acts straight downward. R1 is equal to two kilonewtons per meter times the length of CDE, which is one meter plus 1.5 meters. And that says that the resultant force is equal to 5 kilonewtons. And it acts a distance right in the middle of CDE, and that distance is 1.25 meters. So we've got three more unknowns. The first one would be CY is unknown number three. CX is unknown number four. D we've already identified as an unknown. And the fifth unknown is E. So we've got five unknowns, and we've only written one equation so far. So let's write three more equations, which are going to be the force balances in the x and in the y direction, and a moment balance. The way I do this to keep my notation straight is I'll label my three equations, the sum of forces in the x direction, sum of forces in the y direction, and the sum of moments about some point. So if I do the sum of forces in the x direction, I've got Cx acting to the right. I've got minus D, because it's acting to the left, times the cosine of 45 degrees, minus E, because it's acting to the left. And those three forces, when I sum them together, have to equal zero, because nothing's accelerating. And similarly, the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to Cy acting upward, minus D sine 45, minus R1, again, has to equal zero. 
And now let's do the sum of moments, and I can choose any point on my free body diagram about which to calculate the moments. I'm going to choose point C because it knocks out CX and CY, and I'm going to use a convention that a counterclockwise moment is positive and a clockwise moment is negative. So let's start out from point C. We've got point D is acting one meter to the right of point C, and it's a clockwise moment, so it'll be negative one meter and we want the downward component of that, so it'll be negative one meter times d times the sine of 45 degrees. And then I've got the moment due to r1. It's also clockwise, so that's negative 1.25 meters, the distance of where the resultant force acts from point c, times r1. And those two moments will sum to zero. And I now have a total of five unknowns and I've written the first equation already. Here's equation number two, three, and four. Five unknowns and only four equations. So we need to keep going with this and write another free body diagram. And let's do a free body diagram around that vertical member ABC. So I've cleaned it up a little bit and I've drawn a free body diagram of ABC and I left the free body diagram of CDE in there just for reference for right now. So let's look at this. We've got at point A, there's some unknown vertical component at A. We'll call this AY. And there's a horizontal component, which we'll call AX. We don't necessarily know that they act upward and to the right, but let's assume that they act in the positive X and Y direction. And if we get a negative sign, it simply means that they act in the opposite direction. And at point B, there's a force acting to the upper right, and this again is a 45 degree angle. And let's call this force B, and it acts to the upper right, because we're going to assume that this two force member BD is under tension. And we may get a negative number implying that the force acts in the direction opposite, which we proposed at the beginning. But here's where we have to be careful for point C. In the first free body diagram, I propose that CY is acting upward and CX acts to the right on member CDE. So that means if it acts upward on member CDE, it has to act downward at member ABC. So here I'm going to draw CY acting in the downward direction and CX acting to the left. And this is just Newton's law that forces are acting equal and opposite to one another. Now there's one other force, the resultant force, due to this horizontal triangular distributed load. And we'll call it R2, and we'll say we need to calculate where R2 is located and its magnitude. But let's just say it acts right here. And let's calculate the magnitude of R2. To start with that, we'll say R2 is equal to the integral of this distributed load W over the length dy or over the entire length of ABC. And we need to come up with a function for W and W it's a linear function and W will equal it turns out 2 kilonewtons per meter so I'm saying the maximum value 2 kilonewtons per meter acting at C divided by the height of this thing, which is 3.6 meters, multiplied by y. So what I get at y equals 0, that means we're at point A, and that suggests that w is equal to 0 kilonewtons. And at y equal 3.6, it suggests that w is equal to 2 kilonewtons per meter at the top. So if we integrate this function of w over the entire surface of it, we'll find that the magnitude of r2 is equal to 3.6 kilonewton. We also need to find the distance that R2, that this resultant force acts above point A, and I'll call that y bar. I can solve for y bar by using this relationship that says the magnitude of the resultant force multiplied by y bar is equal to the moment that this resultant force causes. So I can integrate the differential moment, which is w times y dy, and integrate this differential moment over the entire length to solve for y bar. So when I plug in numbers and rearrange to solve for y bar and perform the integration, what I'll find is that y bar is equal to 2.4 meters. And if I substitute y bar in my diagram, I've got R2 acting 2.4 meters above point A. And R2 has a magnitude of 3.6 kilonewtons.
So with this free body diagram, what we've introduced are two more unknowns. Unknown 6 is a y and unknown 7 is a x. We've written four equations. Let's write three more, the sum of forces and sum of moments for this third free body diagram. And then we'll have a total of seven equations and seven unknowns. And at that point, we can do some linear algebra and solve the problem. And here are those final three equations, sum of forces in the x and in the y direction. And again, I can choose any point about which to do the moment balance. In this case, I've chosen point A. So in the x direction, the horizontal direction, I've got AX acting to the right, R2 acting to the right, plus the horizontal component of B, which is B sine 45, minus CX acting to the left. Similarly, for the vertical components, and then the moment about point A, I've got a clockwise moment due to R2, which acts 2.4 meters above point A. And I've got another clockwise moment acting 2.6 meters above point A. So it's the horizontal component is B sine 45. And I've got a counterclockwise moment acting at C, which acts a distance of 3.6 meters above point A. So here's the final three equations that I need. Here's equation 5, 6, and 7. And now I've got seven equations and seven unknowns. And when I solve for these, I'll find that B is equal to negative 8.8 .8 kilonewtons, suggesting that member BD is under compression. B and D are equivalent. And I'll find that CX is equal to negative 2.1 kilonewtons and CY is equal to negative 1.3 kilonewtons. The force E is equal to a positive 4.1 kilonewtons, and AX is equal to 0 0.54 kilonewtons, and AY, the last, the seventh one, is equal to 5 kilonewtons.